Now we're going to meet one of Android's great abstractions, the Recycler view. It's very flexible, it's very powerful, and it's a little confusing when you first get a hold of it. So hopefully I'll be able to guide you through some of that process. So first of all, let's think of a Recycler view as basically a list view that has more capabilities. So it's going to have an adapter, like a list view had an adapter, and we're going to have some data source, some uh, array, and now it's gotten a little bit more complicated. We have this little name and ratings class, which has a string, and it also has a rating, whether or not this is a good album or not. <laughs> These are objective ratings, of course, that I got off the objective uh, art opinions website so you can you can look for that website in your free time but I think everybody thinks working man's dead and American Beauty are good but what we're building towards is a bunch of records that represent items we've fetched from a database or from a network server so this is a start so we have these uh, data records and we want to display them in a list in our uh, activity. So this is an activity and it's got an adapter and you know we're going to look at how we, we uh, this time we're actually coding the adapter but it is going to inherit from uh, an Android base class. We've got a lot of the, the same old same old. Um, we are setting a, a custom navigation icon here and we are setting our content view to Recycler Main. So let's take a look at what the layout uh, view of the world is from Recycler Main. So here we have a, a preview and you can see that the preview is trying to honor the fact that we have a Recycler view in here by putting some items, but it doesn't really know what they look like. And it's, it's the same, same thing we saw with the, the list view, uh, coordinator layout and inner la uh, linear layout and finally, two things a swipe refresh layout which is is just uh nice when you're interacting with the network and i'll show you how that works and then this recycler view so layout wise extremely simple and it's called recycler view so we should be able to get a handle reference to it have the runtime call find view by id if we just refer to recycler view which we do here the recycler view needs an adapter we created an adapter up here just so that this thing would never be null. Uh, we're going to look at how this is implemented in a minute, but let's let's look first at how we hook it up. So hook up the adapter. Uh, recycler view needs a layout manager because there are many ways you can look at a recycler view. It can be um, it can be vertical. It can be horizontal. So a linear layout manager is a nice simple one. <clears throat> and then we want dividers in between the items in our recycler view. Unfortunately, this is horrendously complicated for the uh, functionality we're looking for. So right now I would uh, encourage you to not look at this stuff too carefully. If you want to do this, just copy this code verbatim. I don't want to get into uh, what's going on here too much. Okay, in the list view example, we had an adapter and we fed that adapter uh, a data structure directly. Uh, we're kind of doing the same thing here. We have an adapter and we're calling this add all function. So we're going to see the adapter because we're writing it, it, it's got its own storage, it's got its own notion of what its list is and we're adding a bunch of items to that list here. So this is the initial value of that list but we're handing it off to the adapter. We're actually adding it just, just like the adapter for a list object in this case. You could call add all on a list and transfer the contents of this list into that list. And then uh, we need a little bit of this swipe container stuff. Uh, we have a listener for when you pull it down and we're gonna do something in there. Um, we're going to insert a, a random item. Uh, the reason for that will become clear later. Uh, I just wanted to show you that this is the entire code of the activity and it, it's not too mysterious. So even though we're using a recycler view from the outside, 
it looks a lot like a list view. It's not super complicated to use in a simple way. Um, okay, good. So let's look at the actual adapter where some of the fun starts. So this is a recycler view list adapter or whatever, and it inherits from recycler view dot adapter. Okay, that makes sense. And then this type name is recycler view list adapter, which is this guy, dot name and rating view holder. So this is a little weird. We are naming or referring to ourself and then scoped something inside us. So, oh, what is this? An inner class. So this is an inner class. Let's not look at it right now. No. Uh, oh, wow. Can't believe that worked. Okay, I never do that. Um, so let's put that on hold because the rest of, of this class is actually pretty straightforward. And the inner class is a little bit where the magic happens anyway. So what is a recycler view adapter? Well, first of all, it's got some storage. In this case, it's got a mutable list and it's a mutable list of these name and ratings objects. Okay, that makes sense. So now our uh, adapter has its own data structure that is uh, pretty logical before we sort of passed it in and it, it, there was an element of magic we sort of didn't know where it went but now we're writing the class we're large and in charge this is our array and this is our array and we are adapting between this array and the view hierarchy you see on your phone skip over this inner class on create view holder this is an override function so it's something that's that we're given and what this is is uh we need to create instances of this inner class. And the way we're going to do that is inflating an, uh, uh, an XML layout. Okay, so w what does this whole thing um, mean? Let's consider this view holder like it's a class that wraps every row or, uh, in your recycler view. So a row is like an item because it's a, a linear recycler view. And this view holder is going to be holding the row view. Now, why do we need something to hold our row view? Let's put that question on ice. This may be uh, best dealt with in class. The answer is, is not immediately straightforward. But if we do consider this as holding a row view, what does a row view look like? Well, it's not too complicated. This is the layout. It's just a linear layout with a nested linear layout, an image view, and a text view. Okay, and uh, you know this is the good album and the bad album will be a sad face, and some some text next to it. So this isn't very complicated, but this is one of the first times we've seen a layout that doesn't correspond to an activity. This layout only corresponds to a single row in a recycler view. And what we're saying in onCreateViewHolder is let's inflate or turn an XML specification into an actual view hierarchy that we can manipulate and interact with on the screen. And the way we do that is we use these, these are built-in um, classes, the layout inflator, you're never gonna write a layout inflator, but we're getting the layout inflator from this context object that we get from the parent, which is a view group, it's passed in, don't worry about it too much. And then a layout inflator inflates, and we pass it some XML, and we have to tell it a little bit about how to attach this view to the rest of the view hierarchy. Also wouldn't worry about this so much right now. So that's the view, which is great. And then the view holder, oh, why is it called a view holder? Well, it holds a view. What is the view? The view is a row. And the big trick here is that there are only going to be as many view holders as rows that fit on the screen. So in this case, we, we have 21 album names and fewer than that fit on the screen. So we're only going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 view holders, maybe 14. 14 view holders 
even though there are 21 items in our list. <coughs> okay. Let's go back. So we're going to create a view holder. And we'll, we'll see what that means in a little bit. We're going to bind it. We'll talk about that in a second. And then these are just um, more about the list part, less about the view part. So if we want to add an item to the list, we can. If we want to delete an item at a particular position, we can. If we want to clear everything out, we can. All that stuff should make sense from just manipulating lists. You know, get the, the item count. The thing that's changed is this notify stuff. This notify stuff is the adapter saying, telling the Android runtime, hey, you're going to have to redraw part of the screen. So if we remove an item, not only do we remove the item, we have to tell Android that we removed that item. And Android is most efficient if you give it the most information about what you did. So when we remove an item, we tell it, hey, an item was removed. If we've changed all the items, we just say, you know what, stuff changed. So deal with it. Okay, it's too complicated to tell you all the individual things. But if, if you add an item, insert it, if you remove an item, removed. Okay, this is notifying Android to redraw the screen. So not so bad. So what's this deal with bind? And let's actually take a look at this inner function. So remember, we have a data structure, which has many items, in our case 21. And then we have the view hierarchy, which has a comparatively fewer number of items. In this case, I think 14. So what we're going to do is we're going to create them. And then every time we scroll, we are going to bind them. And what binding means is you're going to connect the data structure to the, to the view. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, 14 views that the Grateful Dead that one now is gone. We are going to recycle it and use it down here. But it says go to heaven. Up here, it says the Grateful Dead. Yes, we are reusing the view holders, but we are putting different data in them. And we only have as many view holders as there are, pre as there are slots on the screen. And that's, that's the big adjustment. So let that sink in, however however you do that. Let's take a look at uh, this this class and, and we'll talk a little bit about why did we make our life seemingly more complicated. It's basically for efficiency and for power, expressive power. Recycler views can do lots of stuff. Okay, the view holder pattern minimizes calls to find view by ID. How does it do that? We create a view holder. Remember, it's holding a view and the view it's holding is the view of our row. And if we go back to our pick text row, we have a pick, which we call pick text row pick, and we have a text, which is pick text row text. Okay, pretty intuitive names there. And we are going to, in the initializer for a view holder item, we are going to call find view by ID which means for every view holder item we call find by, by view <coughs> excuse me we call find view by id once and only once and then we basically have pointers into the view hierarchy into and what do i mean by the view hierarchy uh, uh so this is a simple list let's go to recycler list oh my gosh yeah right so this is the recycler list. It has uh, the picture, it has the text, it has the toast. And as we scroll this thing, what we're doing is we're taking the same 14 items and we are putting in different contact contents and we are only calling find view by ID. Uh, let's see, we're calling it 14 times. We're only calling it 14 times. And so let's just get rid of it. And then we can pull down and get a, a random number. That's just sort of for fun. 
All right, but it, it starts to uh, show you the power of uh, the recycler list. It also have a long, long clickable delete. Okay, so that's, that's, that's a little, oh my God, it's getting really on a bad streak. Shakedown, yeah, Shakedown Street is a great song. It's not such a great album. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at this code. So what's what's going on in this view holder class? We're calling find, find view by ID on the two things that we care about, which is the picture and the text view. And then we are imaginatively calling them the text view and the image view. And note these are vars because as we scroll, we're going to overwrite them. Uh, in, the, uh, in our initializer, in our constructor, we're going to set some things up for every single one of these view holders. Every single one of them is going to be long clickable. And every single one of them is actually going to have the same on click listener and long on long click listener. Our on click listener is going to set this toast. This toast says you selected. And now adapter position is something that this inner class knows about. This recycler.viewholder class knows about. It knows what position I am. Uh, actually, the the adapter, the, yeah, the, the adapter, uh, no, 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 yeah, it's the view holder. The view holder knows uh, adapter position. Adapter position is how we're getting our uh, uh, position in the data structure. Adapter position is the position in the data structure. That's why we can use it to index albums, which is our data structure. And we're getting out the name here and we're putting in a toast. And if we have a, a on long click listener, we remove that item. And we tell the runtime to continue processing uh, long clicks. Maybe that says that we have processed the long click. All right, we can do this in init because every view holder has the same on click listener and on long click listener. However, at bind time, we need to change the text and we need to change the image, potentially change the image. And that's what's going on here. So bind is when let's see, do the yeah. bind is when uh, we reuse uh, a so the, the, this guy is a view holder that's holding Dylan and the dead and we're gonna reuse it re reused it for Working Man's Dead down here and Dylan and the Dead is a bad album and Working Man's Dead is a good album. And so we overwrote the uh, image view here, and we overwrote the the name over here. And so this bind is getting called every time you scroll, and you can put a log message in there, and you can see that. Okay, that's a lot to wrap your head around, but I wanted to put this in a video so you could really study it because you really need to study this because we do a lot with recycler views. So they look a lot like list views from the outside. They've got an adapter. There is a data structure. The adapter is adapting to the view hierarchy. And then the trick is we are getting more efficiency by only calling find view by ID once for as however many view holders as we need on the screen at once. So if you have an, a list that's a thousand items long, you only have 14 view holders for them because that's how many fit on the screen. You only call find view by ID 14 times. Pretty cool. And then at bind time, we're using the result of find view by ID to set the new values. Okay. Recycler view. Get into it.